What a tough forecast. Thank you, Mike. The stunning series of events in Russia over the weekend. President Vladimir Putin averted an armed mutiny, but still faces major challenges. Let's bring in Professor Richard Sindelar now from the University of St. Thomas here in Houston. Thank you so much for your time. Let's talk about what's happened here because we have the head of the Wagner Group leading this armed revolt on Moscow. They're the main reason that Russia has not been able to completely overtake Ukraine. So what do you make of this first real threat to Putin's regime? Well, it's actually fascinating just uh, as of this morning. Uh, Wagner still has its uh, armaments. It's still in camp. Uh, Prigozhin is not to be heard from. Uh, there is some uh, reporting they might replace both the defense minister and the chief of staff, but both of the replacements uh, being discussed are ones who have been uh, friends of Prigozhin. So it, I'm wondering whether Prigozhin is as marginalized uh, as uh, a lot of the uh, uh, report is saying. And we think back to all that's happened the past year. This war in Ukraine has been going on more than a year now. Do you see this having any effects on what's happening in Ukraine right now? Uh, hard to say. Uh, what is left on the Ukrainian front line is not the top troops anymore. Wagner was their best uh, set of troops, their shock troops. So you have a lot of conscripts, some good units there. Uh, but as of today, the Ukrainians are making further advances. So it's a question of whether the Russian defensive lines hold or not. I don't see the Russians going on any offensive uh, maneuvers of any uh, significance in the in the at least the weeks ahead. What about any other implications to us here in the United States? Russia's a major player in the energy market. Will the will the price of oil go up? Well. Uh, when it comes to Houston, it's always a question of oil, and, and in the short term, uh, it's expected that it will go up because of the uncertainty, because the world economy generally between China and other places are dampened down. Oil prices have been staying pretty pretty stabilized around $70 a, a barrel, so I don't see a big rise in that, maybe a short blip to fall back again. When you and I were talking behind the scenes earlier this morning, you couldn't help but bring up the, the word nuclear, which I think sort of, you know, makes everybody pause for a moment. It gets their attention. How do you feel that it just plays a role into all of this in the future? Well, I think particularly European leaders that are closer to those nuclear weapons than we are, the tactical ones, they're very worried. Uh, remember, this is the first time ever since the invention of nuclear weapons that a major country that held nuclear weapons came close to a civil war with the possibility that the nuclear weapons could be held both by the government but by the rebels. And w will we hear from President Biden today or this week about this, or is he going to stay low-key for now? Uh, I would expect the press secretary to, to say one or two uh, more or less vanilla sorts of things. Once again, we don't like to say a lot publicly, uh, either criticizing or, or celebrating what happened because that makes it look like NATO was behind it and we just give Putin a card to play to, to shore himself up in Moscow. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, Dr. Sindelar, it's, it's a, a just an unbelievable situation unfolding before our eyes, so keep us surprised at what's going on. You're definitely in the know. <laughs> okay, thank you, Melissa. All right, have a good one.